So in front of me, I have a number of tropical trees, which I'm going to be turning into bonsai trees throughout the next couple of years. Uh, so what are these trees? Why did I buy them? Well, let's find out. All right, so why did I buy all of these trees? Well, there's a variety of factors. I think the main reason why I bought these trees is because it'll allow me to make videos and work on stuff throughout the year. So living in Chicago, right now I pack up my trees, usually end of November, early December, into the garage. They sit there until I take them out sometime in early April. Uh, last year we had snow until mid-April, so I kind of took them out like April 15th and put them on the patio. Then they started growing, and there really wasn't much to look at until May. Uh, so that's a long period where I'm not recording any videos, I'm not working on trees, refining any skills. So I figured with the tropical indoor stuff, uh, I can at least keep working here and there throughout the winter months. Now, I did have reasons for each of these trees, so I'll go over this one by one. Uh, over here, we have Podocarpus. Now, this is a conifer. It's related to spruce and pine and juniper. Uh, it looks kind of maybe like a tropical broadleaf tree. Uh, however, it is, you know, a tropical plant, but it is related to conifers. Uh, some people call it Buddhist pine. Uh, and originally when I saw it, I figured that's just kind of like a name, Buddhist pine. Uh, these uh, needles, they kind of reminded me of like a longleaf ficus. So I figured it's just a broadleaf tree. However, it is a conifer. And so this year I was collecting all the pines. Uh, if you've seen my videos, you know I have the Japanese black pine, the Austrian pine, Mugo pine, uh, Japanese white pine. I want to get a red pine. I've got the Eastern American white pine. Um, then, of course, spruce, and I got yews, and I got larches, uh, Japanese and European. Now, I also want to get the American larch. I've got bald cypress, pond cypress, Don Redwood. Uh, I'm just collecting conifers, so in that mindset, I threw these two on as well because, of course, I can keep them indoors, but they're also conifers, uh, so I just kind of like the uniqueness of these. So we have one with longer needles and one with shorter needles. Uh, of course, I want these to grow much, much taller. I'm probably going to repot these in bigger pots, keep them outside in the summertime, and see if we can thicken these trunks. All right, so next up, we have two citrus trees. Now this one's a Meyer lemon, and this one is a Kalamondin, which for, I guess, essentially, it's like an orange. It's going to have small little orange fruits here. Uh, they're not edible. Uh, this Meyer lemon is edible. However, I don't think I'll have full-sized fruit on this. Um, and the reason I bought these is, I guess I like the concept of a lemon tree. Um, I saw Nigel Saunders' video about his lemon tree, uh, and it's got kind of a taller look to it. Um, and I started wondering, well, why don't people really use citrus for bonsai? Is it because of some kind of growth habit? Does it not wire easily? Uh, do the leaves not reduce? Like, I couldn't really think of it. Uh, and I started looking it up, and I saw, you know, on bonsaiempire.com, they mentioned, you know, some care tips for them. Um, and I really couldn't find much info in the way of why it isn't used very frequently. Uh, so I figured I'll give it a shot and I'll see what I can turn it into. Uh, this is a Meyer lemon, so it would produce fruit that I can eat. Of course, um, I'm probably not going to allow it to fruit to full size, uh, at least not with thin branches like this, because they would probably get bent out of shape for a number of months. Uh, so we'll just kind of leave that. I might style it in a very similar way to what Nigel did with his, kind of in a taller manner. Uh, and then what I have here is an orange, uh, not really orange, it's the Calamondin. Um, and basically I bought it because it'll remind me of Florida. Uh, so as some of you may know, if you've watched previous videos, I like, you know, the saltwater aquariums. I've been uh, into land snails for a number of years. Florida is a very good place for land snails and sea snails. Uh, and just a number of tropical plants. So I always like vacationing in Florida. And of course, uh, the orange tree is kind of like an icon of Florida. So for that reason, I figured I would buy this because it just kind of reminds me of all those different things I just listed. Uh, so there are, well, I mean, the biggest problem with this tree uh, is that the trunk is very thin. 
So what I'm gonna have to do is repot it into bigger pots because I can't grow it in the ground here in Chicago uh, and just let all of this grow pretty crazy to thicken up that trunk. And then we'll prune it back in maybe two or three years when hopefully that trunk is thick enough. And the final style is gonna be a little bit different. This one, like I said, I'm gonna be growing it a little bit taller, uh, but for this orange, uh, in the end, I think I'm gonna chop, you know, majority of the stuff off. I wanna keep it about this height and then maybe wire some stuff more horizontally so you kind of have a lower to the ground, horizontal umbrella type of canopy on this orange tree. And so this will produce fruit, so smaller ones, and we'll just kind of see how this turns out uh, progressing through the years. Now, the last thing I have is an umbrella tree uh, Shaflera and I bought it and I bought this pot too figuring I was going to repot it very soon uh, however I'm not going to do that I ended up potting it in this big pot because I want the trunk to thicken up kind of like on all of these uh, before we do any work so it is just nursery style in a pot of soil with fertilizer and I'm going to let it grow to maybe you know this size uh, hopefully that'll thicken up the trunk enough for a bonsai this size, chop it way back, and we'll see what happens. Now, the reason I bought a white pot uh, is because this is a variegated Schefflera. Now, there are some that are more yellowish in color. They have the variegated spots that are yellow, uh, but the variegation on this one is pretty white in color. So it matches the pot, and there's not really a whole lot of it. There's just kind of flecks here and there. So I figured uh, stylistically, uh, this goes pretty well together for the plant. Uh, so we'll eventually be putting it in a very small pot. Again, I don't really have a, you know, a lot of room, especially after buying all these other ones. So I'm going to be having kind of a dwarf Schefflera. Uh, and that's it for right now. I have these under Yescom panels, again, because I don't really have a lot of room by a window or anything. So I'm just hanging the Yescom 225 panels above them. I'm going to be moving a lot of these outside. These Podocarpus were already outside on the patio in the summertime. Uh, hopefully we can thicken the trunk as quickly as possible. And once the trunk is thick, I can chop off the roots, put them in smaller pots, kind of save on space, prune them back. Uh, but for right now, that's what I have. Five tropical trees I'm going to be working on throughout the year. Uh, they probably won't be mentioned in videos anytime soon because like I said there is a lot of growth that has to happen on these and that probably won't happen until you know summertime when I can move these outdoors and start fertilizing them again uh, so it's probably going to be quite some time until they're mentioned uh, however that's it for now with my tropical bonsai trees